So what are the best ways to get views and promote your YouTube channel with all of the changes that have been happening on social media and YouTube going into 2021? Well, in this video, Marissa Romero, a YouTube expert and social media strategist, breaks down seven practical ways you can promote your YouTube channel for free to reach your first 1,000 subscribers and beyond coming up. Want a copy of YouTube Secrets audiobook for free? Right now, when you sign up for a free 30-day trial of Audible, you can also get a complimentary copy of the number one best-selling YouTube strategy book in the world. Download your copy today at tubesecretsaudio.com. Welcome back, influencers, to Video Influencers. Sean Cannell here, and I'm fired up for this episode because we're gonna be going through practical ways that you can promote your YouTube channel for free and reach your first 1,000 subscribers and beyond. And today, I'm joined by Marissa Romero. She is a full-time creator earning over six figures a year. She helps people understand that they have winning six-figure knowledge that they can build, grow, and scale online. And she has traveled the world, spent time as a digital nomad, built a business around her lifestyle. Four years ago, you could see on her channel a video she uploaded about her LASIK eye surgery. But then quickly, three years ago, she started helping people with affiliate marketing, online marketing, social media, and how to earn passive income online. And that's all generated by getting views, by getting subscribers, by using YouTube. And we're going to get right into tip number one with Marissa on how to promote your YouTube channel for free using TikTok. Marissa, what's your advice? Yes. So thank you so much for that great introduction, Sean. Um, yeah. So TikTok, as we all know, has absolutely exploded, especially during the quarantine and during this crazy 2020 pandemic year. And a couple of things I wanted to highlight about TikTok, if you're not already utilizing the platform, is that it has over 800 million follower um, users on the platform every single month, which is massive. It's probably much more than that by now. And the cool thing about TikTok that I recently discovered is similar to Google AdSense, you can also get paid. It's called, I wrote it down, it's called a um, TikTok creator fund. And backing up a little bit, the cool thing about TikTok is that you can link your YouTube channel straight to um, the TikTok platform. And what's even more cool now is I'm pretty sure if you have minimum a thousand followers on the platform that you can add a link right in the bio. So the virality on TikTok is like something that you cannot ignore, especially during these times where social media traffic in general is going up and up. So definitely I would be leveraging the TikTok platform if you're interested in growing your channel. It's something where you could even take a couple of tips from the YouTube videos that you're making and just converting them into the portrait style video and uploading it onto the TikTok platform. Yeah, and what's cool is that TikTok, because of the acquisition, is safe and a good place to build for the future. And some of the other videos we've done on this channel with like Brock Johnson, talk even about creating content that could be used for reels first without the TikTok branding, and then potentially be used on Instagram reels and TikTok, multi-purposing the content. What do you think about that, Marissa? No, I think that's great, um, especially because I think Reels is something that is very popular right now and taking off. Um, recently, I noticed the one of the Reels I just posted is showing up in the Explorer page. I was like, I've never seen anything in the Explorer page of mine, but I've seen <laughs> my Reels, so I, I'm, I'm feeling that. I like it. I love it. Well, tip number two for how to promote your YouTube channel for free is creating search-based content by focusing on keywords. What's your advice on doing this to get more views? Yes. So I recently down, well, not recently, a couple of years ago, but I re recently paid for a tool called Keywords Everywhere, which back in the day, creators from 2018, 2017, and before knew that Keywords Everywhere was a tool that was free. Now it does cost money, but it's very, very affordable. It's like $10 and you get like 100,000 clicks, which means you get to see data for, for keywords that you type in 100,000 times, right? So what's really cool about that tool is that it will pop up on the screen. Like if you type in how to lose belly fat in 30 days or something like that, it'll sh it'll show you the monthly search volume, volume, <laughs> volume, and then also the CPC and a couple, I think one other data point. But what I love about that tool is that it gives a, a creator that's just starting out on YouTube the ability to see like a creative keyword for their um, channel. So YouTube, I will say this forever, is by far the most powerful 
traffic on the internet because of the video component and because of the search engine optimization component in the way that you are able to rank on the first page of YouTube, even if you are a small creator. That's really the power in it. I've seen some of um, the students that I've coached before, literally a channel with 50 or only 50 subscribers was able to outrank a creator, I think, with 300,000 on the first page because of well-researched keywords, right? And that video had got like, I think, a thousand views and it's a baby channel. But that is the power of doing keyword research right and being um, diligent in your research every single time that you you want your title to be keyword rich. So I can't emphasize that enough. Super powerful. And if you want to check out more details on doing keyword research, if you're new to that, click or tap the YouTube card because we have a series here on video influencers that can help with that. And if you've been getting value so far out of these tips, smash the like button because Marissa has more tips for us on how to promote our channels with the third one being collaborations, which is in fact what we're even doing right now. Collaborations can come in a lot of different ways. It could be an interview. It could be a collaboration that you don't even have to be in person with the person. Uh, Marissa's in Columbia right now. I'm in Las Vegas, yet we are creating content using a tool called StreamYard. So there's so many different ways to do collaborations. But Marissa, what is your advice? Yes. So my first advice to people thinking about, oh my gosh, a collab is don't think it's scary. Never be too um, intimidated or think that just because another creator has a larger audience um, than you, that you can't offer value for their audience and collab with them. Don't ever be afraid to ask. What I say, and in the beginning when I was a smaller, because at the making of this video, I think I'm 100, closing in on 130,000 subscribers. But I, when I was smaller, like less than 10K subs, I would not hesitate to reach out to other creators, even though they were bigger to me, because I would always lead with value first. Like, look, how could I help you first? You know, I know that, I, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, I, don't, I know I don't have a, as big an audience as them, but I'm sure I could offer them advice on this. Or maybe you have a platform, maybe you have a LinkedIn or a Pinterest account or some other type of social media platform that has a strong presence and say, hey, I could also shout you out on this platform. But I think first it's just leading with how you can serve them first and tell them, shoot them an email. And you can also shoot them a DM and say, hey, what I love about you know your videos, I've been watching them for X amount of time. Um, you know, just things that you really like about their channel and how each other's audiences would be great to swap and um, and give value in that type of way. And like Sean said, you don't need, you know, to be sitting next to each other in a room, especially this year, it's kind of impossible in some areas of the world, like a Zoom call is perfectly fine. You know, we're using a tool, like he said, called StreamYard. There's so many great ways to collab and um, virtually exchange audiences. And that helps really, um, you know, their audience is gonna, is gonna love you because they really like and respect that creator. So it's like, if I tell people go watch Sean Cannell, they're gonna be like, yeah, because Marissa said so, we're gonna go subscribe to um, video influencers. So that is a really special thing about collaborations. Powerful, where our fourth tip is Facebook groups. How do you recommend, especially when we're talking about free ways to promote our YouTube channel and actually get more YouTube subscribers and viewers, should we be paying attention to Facebook groups? Absolutely. I know that Facebook groups nowadays are a little bit, what's the word? They're, they're a lot more protective now as far as promotions and don't put your affiliate links. And you really don't want to do that. You don't want to spam Facebook groups. But I really think there is something very special about Facebook groups because it's a very active section within Facebook that's very organic and very powerful in regards to traffic. There's people in Facebook groups that want to learn how to solve one of their problems and they want to figure out how to do something. And if you are in there actively participating in the group, answering questions of what other people are asking, it makes it, um, you then in turn become one of the shining stars of the group and not in like a spammy way. People look to you as a leader because you are answering a lot of questions. And then from there, it's kind of like, well, if you do want to know more about it, I did make a YouTube video about it. And so that way you don't sound like desperate and that you're trying to grow your channel and oh, go subscribe. But you're doing it in a way where, again, the theme is leading with value and um, answering their questions first. 
That's so true. And a powerful story I just uh, heard recently with somebody on the think media side of things um, named Tony Ariola and his wife, Cami. Together, they have a channel called The Plant-Based Kitchen. And it's a relatively new channel for those that are kind of living a vegan lifestyle. Only a handful, five to 10 videos. In fact, we want to pass the questions off to you uh, watching. Tell us in the comments, how many videos have you posted so far on YouTube? And are you earlier in your journey or have you been doing this for a while? For Tony and Cammie, they were at the very beginning of this new channel, but they were very active in a couple vegan Facebook groups, and they did meaningful posts delivering all the value right there, but then also linking to a video that answered a specific vegan-related question. And you need to know the terms and services of the group, but in one case, this big vegan Facebook group, the post started to go, quote-unquote, viral. And it actually triggered 8,000% growth on their channel, going from just a few hundred subscribers to over 2,000 subscribers. Um, Cami just got a brand deal with an olive oil company, all from doing this strategy in a Facebook group. So you got to put in the work. You got to be tactful. You're not spamming. You're just adding value. You're connecting with people. You're being helpful. You're answering questions. And if you actually want to see a full breakdown Tony did on that, I'll link that up on the uh card because I think it's one of the most powerful strategies you can do, but you kind of got to do it right and know the nuances. And so if you want to learn more about that, definitely check it out. Which brings us to the fifth tip, Marissa, and that is email lists. For those that wonder why even have an email list, what is an email list and how could an email list help me with promoting my YouTube channel? What's your advice? Yeah, this um, the email list is of utmost importance because although YouTube traffic is the most powerful, your email list is your very own source of traffic and it is instant. Literally with one click, you can have several people um, clicking on your email and clicking on the link in your email. I think where people get intimidated in the beginning of growing a YouTube channel is where they're like, oh my gosh, like I don't even have an email list or I only have like 75 people on my list and it's still a small list. Well, I would definitely say it doesn't matter if you have one person on your list, email them. Why? Because first of all, they're your email subscribers and they've trusted you to give them their information and they, they like you. They want to connect more th with you and they want to learn more from you. So when you email them and email them, you know, whether it's a YouTube video or another piece of content, that's great because that's content that they want to consume. And that also gives you the view and most likely a like on that video. So this is something that I do on my channel once a week. I email my list. Um, typically, I post Tuesday and Friday. So typically Tuesdays, I'll send my email list kind of like a, what do I call it? Not a newsletter, but it's kind of like a freebie pack. Like all of co the content I've posted in the past week, I will email it out. But my call to action is typically click on my YouTube video first. So that helps boost the, the view velocity. And what that what the algorithm loves about the view velocity is that it triggers like, okay, well, if this uh, video is having uh, a lot of views within the first hour within the first 12 hours it's really good we want to go ahead and algorithmically push more traffic to that video so that's what's really cool and why the email list is is such a special um thing for your channel and, and plus it's it's your own youtube you know don't this i know this video isn't about that but earlier this year my channel was hacked and deleted and it taught me a big lesson that you know, you really have to get your business off of social media. And the number one way you have to be doing that is by building your list. And so if I hadn't had that list, I would have been screwed, right? You know, luckily I was able to get my channel back a month later, but it was very scary. And I highly recommend, um, you know, as soon as you post your first video on your YouTube channel, start to grow your list. So smart and diversification in general is smart. If you're depending on just one source of traffic, just one thing, you're vulnerable. And even can, kind of taking that to a more advanced place, I agree with everything you've said. I also think what's interesting is that some people that have slept on being intentional about building their email lists find themselves vulnerable later when algorithms do change. And I think about, we've been building our email list at Video Influencers and in Think Media since basically the beginning. And organic reach usually does go down. I mean, on YouTube, the algorithm 
algorithm's always changing. But even on other platforms, we've been able to, again, send traffic, just like you described, especially if we do like a live stream, we can start getting 30 people, 50 people, a couple hundred people sometimes to show up live with the ability at the push of a button to send out an email versus waiting on YouTube to distribute that stream or something else, which put yourself up against some other creator, some other influencer that builds a list and someone who doesn't, the person with the list is always gonna have that advantage, that extra line of communication directly with their community. So this is some rock solid advice coming from Marissa. If you're loving uh, her tips, smash the like button. And of course, we'll have links in the description where you can watch more videos from her and follow her on all of social media channels. But we've got two more tips coming up. And number six is leave thoughtful comments on other people's content in order to grow your channel, promote your channel. Marissa, before you talk about the tip in doing this, people try this though, but they do it wrong. Like they do sub for sub. Is sub for sub a bad idea? Is just spamming comments a bad idea? What are your thoughts? Yeah, and that's actually, it's it's a bad idea because a lot of uh, bigger influencer influencers and creators, um, at least I have those words blocked because there's some, yeah, there's a lot of profanity and like curse words that I have blocked on my channel. And one of them is like for like, cause it's just annoying. It's not tactful. It's, it's just, a, it's just bad. I mean, if you really, if you're looking to grow a legit brand on YouTube, um, you don't want your first impression from other, you know, people on the internet to be like, like for like sub for sub. And um, it's, it's kind of the same idea as you had touched on Sean with Facebook groups with it is leaving thoughtful comments like leaving a comment that relates to something in the video that's like 10 minutes in not just you know in the first 30 seconds or not just oh great video or something like that because you know back when i was a smaller creator i there was a few people where i i knew their posting times and i was like i'm gonna post every single one and i and i would genuinely leave a comment that that you know, where I watched their video and I would comment back like, hey, that was a good point you made about X, Y, Z. Thank you so much. I learned this. And the other thing too, is that I notice other creators that are doing that on my channel. I mean, I like it. I don't mind. I mean, I know it. I know now that it's um, part of them trying to generate traffic, but I, I don't mind because if they're not leaving their YouTube channel links, they're not um, sending traffic to their affiliate links, they're um, interacting with other comments on my video, which is great because that, that helps with the engagement of my video, but other people are going to go to their video and watch and say like, Hey, well, what is this channel about? And so definitely it's, you know, do it. And it, my advice is like, it would be, it would be good to comment on big channels, but comment on up and coming channels too. maybe channels with less than 10,000 10, subscribers, because you have the ability to get, you know, more notice instead of your comment drowning in, you know, 800 comments or something like that. So that is good. Yeah. And before we get to tip number seven, I want to kind of give a bonus tip uh, on the idea of comments in general. And that is the idea that the best way to promote your YouTube channel at the end of the day is by creating your next best video. If you create a video that gets clicked on, that gets the average view duration, that really answers people's questions, that is the information or the content people are looking for, that video is gonna grow your channel faster than anything else. But sometimes you say, well, what kind of content should I create? What is that next smartest video I can make? And one of the best places to discover that can be in other people's comments. So many in the community here at Video Influencers say, well, I don't have any comments yet. I even tell people, leave me a comment of what you wanna see next, but my channel's too small to even get feedback. Well, when you go on other people's videos, besides leaving thoughtful comments, read what people are saying, read maybe them saying, I wish this video would have covered this, or this video brought up this question by actually listening to active YouTube viewers in other people's comments that could inspire your next best video idea. And your next best video could be something that triggers your growth. Before we get to number seven, Marissa, can you think of a time when you had a breakout video? What's one of your videos that you put out and it did almost better than any other videos? When you look back now, you go, man, that video really grew my channel because I talked about a certain topic at a certain time with a certain title and a certain thumbnail. What's an example of like one video that really grew your channel? Um, I would have to say, one of my work from home videos how to work from a hammock how to work from an Airbnb how to work from a mountainside let's say how to work from um, this hammock I have sitting outside 
right here is what really got me on the map last year. And what was cool about it was it was it was a fun video that I made. I think I just took a little bit extra time to be more create, creative with the introduction um, because, you know, as you've talked about several times, the intro holding attention in the first minute of that intro is is crucial. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to put a bunch of cool B-roll um, of places I've traveled and um, really try to think about just online work from home jobs that, you know, are not Fiverr or, you know, not the general ones that people think of. So that one was, that one was a, a a good one for me, by one of my first viral videos. I love that. And we will link up all of those videos and more in the description, but we have the final tip number seven for how to promote your YouTube channel for free coming up. And when we say free, here's the thing, we're talking sweat equity. We're talking about you putting in the grind here. These mm -hmm. do not cost you money. They just cost your time. They cost you rolling up your sleeves, punching fear in the face, punching perfectionism in the face and pressing record and putting in the time to get your channel out there. And so if you've been getting value out of this video, smash the like button. And I do want to pass the question off to you. How many videos are you in your YouTube journey? Have you not posted your first video yet? Have you, um, are you 50 videos in a hundred videos in tell us in the comment section below. And then as soon as we're done with tip number seven, you're going to want to check out Marissa's video that actually goes deeper in how to grow your YouTube channel and reach your first 1000 subscribers and beyond. So we'll put that in the YouTube description so you can watch that video next. But the final tip, Marissa, for how to promote your channel is IGTV, Instagram. We already talked a little bit about reels and that's kind of a new thing, but what do you find unique about Instagram TV that we could apply to promote our channels? Yeah, what I find great about IGTVs is if you have, if you have an Instagram account, first off, download the IGTV app so that you can start promoting um, and using IGTV. And the reason why it's so special is because you can actually link a link in IGTV, in the IGTV description. The description is, um, it's up here. It's all, and that confused me at first. I'm like, wait, where's the link? Where's the description? But you click up and um, when, it, when it drops down, you can click on any link that is in the description. So that is really great because obviously we're limited with Instagram. We only have the link in the bio. Yeah, we could do a link tree, but if your content has, if, you know, if you have several IGTV um, posts on your Instagram and they're all linking back to your YouTube channel, those are kind of a way of evergreen on your Instagram. It's kind of the closest way to evergreen that you're going to get. And the thing that I found with several testing on my Instagram is that my IGTVs are the best performing as far as engagement, as far as shares, as far as saves. And people are clicking to see that that video because um, it's really the only way that they can, right? To see a specific video because it's not like um, our YouTube description where we can put 20 links if we want to. Um, that's not that's not the type of freedom we have on Instagram. So I think that um, IGTV is a great way to show different highlight clips from your video. So if you have a 15 minute YouTube video, you want to pick um, just a couple of highlight re reels from that video, maybe a, a curiosity based statement, a power statement that you've said throughout your video that you know is going to um, spark curiosity and you know encourage people to click like, oh, okay, well, definitely let me watch this video and I'll click in the uh, description of her IGTV and go watch the rest of it on, on uh, YouTube. And the other thing I like to do is give a call to action. Um, sometimes I give a uh, video in person call to action. So I'll show like a minute to 90 seconds of my YouTube video clips. And then I'll say, hey, you guys, you know, to continue watching this, click up here in the IGTV description and let's go ahead and continue watching the video on um, the YouTube channel and I'll see you there. Go ahead, click, click, click. So that's what I like to do. Brilliant, Marissa. And thank you for adding value to the video influencers community today. 